Hello and welcome to the Build with Bear Workshop. My name is Pat Bear. I'm here to build a model kit and of course to hang out with all of you. I'm throwing the Bear Cave the leg of the site, the moat in the chat. If you're currently a subscriber, you can play with those emotes. Uh, uh, Harold, thank you for hosting. Thank you to Glenn for being here, throwing in the, uh, the old Lego pat. And of course the T, throwing in those emotes as well. Thank you and welcome. Uh, Aristophan throwing in those emotes. Hello, Aristophan. Bald Ridge is hosting the stream. Thank you, Bald Ridge, for the host. Uh, uh, appreciate that. Hope everyone's doing fine and dandy on this, uh, you know, Thursday evening. Um, uh, I didn't remember what day it was for a little bit there. Lastbrook is here. Hello, Lastbrook. Uh, I knew that it was a Monday, a Thursday, or a Saturday because I'm building a model kit. But I was like, is it a Monday? Uh, no, it's a Thursday. Um, what's happening tonight? Well... We got this Neko Busho uh, um, uh, treasure ship. It's a pirate ship, whatever. Uh, but we got this little cat in a cat carrier. Uh, the Neko Busho line is taking cats like this, not this exact one every time, but cats like this, and then building some sort of mech around it. And I have a couple different options. Um, tonight's stream is dedicated to this kit, so I don't know. It does come with a part separator, so we could theoretically take these parts, uh, take these apart, and then. Um, uh, do another version of this kit because uh, it comes with different alternatives it depends how long it takes but we'll dedicate tonight to working on this and then move on to other things in the future i uh, wanted to finish that sentence and there you go uh Aristophan saying hey my new password works that's good also Aristophan gifted a tier one sub to ghost valve uh ghost valve uh welcome aboard i can take this off now because we have hit 50 subs thank you to thanks to the gifted sub from Aristophan. it won't update um probably on my dashboard because it also says i only have one person uh watching the stream right now on my dashboard um which you may know you might know um is wrong because there are more of you here in the chat uh so that's fun i'm gonna hit refresh on my dashboard see if i can uh have those numbers make more sense we'll see nope still doesn't make any sense but anyway um let's throw the bear cave in there we're all one person i'm the only one here it's a wrist fan indeed everybody knows what's up but yeah, um, that's a good, important thing to say. I mentioned this last night in the stream, but I'll say it again. Um, please consider resetting your Twitch password and uh, consider enabling two-factor authentication. Um, uh, your stream, uh, your Steam key has been, uh, um, uh, your stream key, I should say, your stream key has been reset as of today as a, uh, by uh, Twitch. Uh, who did suffer uh, a hack um, that's been made known to the public as of yesterday, uh, supposedly by the person who was posting this information, uh, they were not looking to um, uh, uh, go after Twitch users in particular, um, but uh, it's still good to just do that. It's also good to change your passwords now and again. Um, uh, look in your Firefox or your Chrome, or I, I think Edge does it as well. Look in your password manager there to see what sites have been breached that you haven't updated your password for since the breach, um, or uh, passwords that maybe you need to give a little update to. Maybe they need a little freshness. Maybe they're too similar to other passwords used in the past that are on vulnerable sites. Uh, it's a good time. You know, it's just good for your own uh, well-being to do that stuff. Um, I did get an email uh, that someone was trying to log into my Instagram. Uh, so that was fun. But uh, of course they didn't because they they couldn't log into my Instagram. So that was good. Uh, I was happy that they failed. Not that there's anything special about my Instagram. I just don't want them to. Uh, also, I had to log into a, a Yahoo account because if I don't if I didn't log into that Yahoo account before December, they'd close it. And I don't need that Yahoo account, but I do still want it to exist uh, as a, an emergency, I guess. Um, I think also partly, maybe maybe it would fuck up my Flickr, which I haven't used in years, but it is nice to go back to. Uh, it's also easier to search on Flickr if you have an old account, apparently. This is the thing I learned. So I'm saying things like Yahoo and Flickr. I'm really dating myself. It's pretty weird. Anyway, uh, Nekobusho is what we're working on tonight. Tonight we'll also be talking about, we'll talk a little more about that, um, the hack uh, and uh, various fallouts uh, from that. Um, uh, and we'll talk about it's New York Comic Con this weekend, and I feel weird about that. Uh, I've been getting stuff lined up for to go to PAX Unplugged in December, so that's coming, you know, that's a thing that 
is the thing to look forward to. Um, and, <clears throat> sorry, I'm going to drink a little water, then we'll get going here. <coughs> I haven't really talked much today. Sometimes that is difficult for me if I haven't communicated in a little while, uh, getting this, this voice going here. Um, we'll go to the overhead. We'll take off this thing here. I'm going to retweet my tweet. We'll get to building in just a moment. Um, yeah, uh, so the first thing we'll talk about is a, is a short thing. I don't have a, I don't have major thoughts on this. Uh, here's our cat here. Um, these are things that I did at the end of Monday stream, just to prep for this, just getting these together. I need to remove some other parts here, but we'll get those together. Um, hey, uh, the last Smash character for Ultimate was announced, and it's Sora. And look, I don't have... I don't have big thoughts on Kingdom Hearts. Maybe you would think that I would have big thoughts on Kingdom Hearts. My big thoughts on Kingdom Hearts are, I didn't enjoy playing the first game, Kingdom Hearts. But I do know that people like those games. They might not actually like them, but they believe they like them. We'll say that. Because this that game, uh, the, the series of games, does seem to have this thing where, like, I don't know, there's a love for it that seems forced. And that's rude of me to say, I know. It's rude of me to pass judgment on someone's fandom and decide that they're, like, weird fans of it. But it does feel true. It does feel like a thing where I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if you like it or if it was a popular game at some point in your life and you you have uh embraced it as part of your um belief system or your personality uh, well, i i will say this if it's a game you like if you're you're watching this and, and you enjoy that game cool uh i do know that just the the very concept that it's it's sora right but, like, it's still a Disney thing. There's a Disney thing in a Nintendo thing. And that's, like, a lot of conversations and fights and arguments that had to happen. Like, that doesn't happen easy. All right, so is this the same both sides? Okay, the same both sides. Like, that's not... An, Sora in, in Smash is not an easy thing. That's, like, conversations and arguments and deals and... All kinds of nonsense. Like, that's a lot. That's a whole lot to get done. So that's interesting. Also, let's uh, let's just like put it out there, so we're all on the same page. Justice for Waluigi. Like that's my that that honestly is my big thing. Um, like that I joked about it, but I also not joking about it. Like, that's also a thing that I feel in my heart of hearts that, like, hey, what about Luigi? No, Waluigi. Luigi's in there. What about Waluigi? Why can't we put Waluigi in Smash? It just it just feels wrong. It just feels wrong to not have Waluigi in there. And that's, that's honestly all I really have to say about that. I just, I feel like we're, we're fucking up as a society if we're not including Waluigi. Waluigi is the last character would have been great. Waluigi was never going to happen. They kept saying assist trophies will never become characters. The T, here's the thing. They say a lot of shit and they don't mean it because who cares? Uh, because why? Why can't assist trophies be characters in it? Who cares? Like, Solid Snake has been in a Smash game. So it's just like, who cares? Anything can happen. Sonic the Hedgehog is in these games. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Nothing matters at all. There might be an assist move where Goofy shows up. Or Donald Duck shows up. Sonic the Hedgehog is bigger than Waluigi. The T, I'm not talking about the size of a character. I'm saying nonsense that doesn't fit in Smash Brothers happens all the time so why can't a character that is in the Mar mario universe show up 
just because it's an assist trope. None of it makes sense. And none of it is like, none of it has any logic at all to it. So to me, that is an indication that like, who cares? All bets are off. Just go for it. Also, nope, like absolutely nothing Disney is showing up. They're going to great lengths to show Donald the Goofy are nowhere in sight. The T, we watched one tease and Mickey is in it like on the key blade. They moved them from the background. Last work, yeah, I mean, you know, look, I, I'm saying we saw one thing in one trailer. Never say never that we're not going to see anything related to Disney uh, involved in there. I, I definitely, I'm definitely not ready to say like, oh yeah, they're definitely not going to have anything from Disney in this. Because then it's like, well, then why do they want Sora in it at all? Yeah. But that's my thing is what why then why have Sora if you're not gonna have Disney shit? Because like literally, people do like Kingdom Hearts, but are they into Kingdom Hearts for Sora or are they into Kingdom Hearts for weird Disney shit happening? Because that's what I really want to know. I genuinely don't know this because I don't understand why people like Kingdom Hearts. But I was under the impression that people like Kingdom Hearts for two reasons. One, the story is bonkers and nonsense and terrible and people like that. And two, Disney characters getting up to weird shit. Like, and interacting with one another. But I... And I, I, I don't claim to know a lot of people that are really into Kingdom Hearts, but I, all of those people, none of them have ever been, have ever said to me. And also, you know, I want Sora to like do well and have like good, a good time and like succeed. Like that's never been a part of it. So I don't know if like this, like one, in my opinion, more people were psyched to hear the orchestrated simple and clean than they were that it's Sora. Like, it's Kingdom Hearts, and that's great, but it wasn't like, oh, yeah, it's my boy Sora is here. Uh, it was like, Sora's in this one. Okay, but also simple and clean. Uh, Harold throwing in some emotes, and Dirty saying, evening Pat and chat, throwing my view in the ring, but still got him uh, 18 minutes left in the uh, uh, U.S. versus Jam. Uh, I believe that would be Jamaica match. All right, well, enjoy United States versus Jamaica. Um enjoy that but thanks for thanks for dropping in a view uh i saw so many reaction videos of people losing their mind at sora yeah and that that's the thing like i wasn't sure if it was like people who were like my boy sora's in this one or if it was people who are like kingdom hearts representation in something because like look this take is mean but i do like the people who are just like i want to like uh i want to like kingdom hearts and at least it'll make sense in this story like this is the only kingdom hearts that will make any kind of sense ever like there will never be a kingdom Hearts, like a kingdom hearts thing that will ever make more sense than smash brothers having having uh sora in it like that that makes the most sense of anything that's ever happened to this franchise um i feel like post uh kingdom hearts 3 a lot of hype has gone down i mean that's I mean, here's the thing, right? I think hype for three, three took so long to come out that hype could only come down until the ramps up again for more, uh, which will come. Uh, I think a lot of people, uh, I think it was a lot of it was Sora was the highest requested character for the last Smash game back before three was released. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And people had a lot of hype for that. Oh, I put this on the wrong way. Got to make sure I'm doing all these steps right because I don't know how this works, so... I got to make sure I'm doing it properly because I'm not fully comfortable with building anything from this kind of kit right now. I've never built this kit before or anything like this particular kit. All right, so this is going to go. I'm going to build this. I need A and B and D, so we'll get D here. Um, Harold says, yeah, of all the characters who are in Smash uh, uh, Second Fighter Pack, there's only one whose game I really uh, got into uh min min from arms yeah like look one of the things that people like about this is that it's a bunch of nonsense weirdo characters and things that don't make any sense and don't fit right 
and there are people who are really on board for that and i and i'm here for it um like uh you know i don't know like here's here's my thing right I'm much more interested in Piranha Plant than I am in most characters from random ass video games. A Piranha Plant doesn't make any sense, and I think that's rad. So I'm really into Piranha Plant as a concept. But like, also, I'm not. I haven't played Smash Brothers Ultimate since my roommate left when, uh, before I left New York because I don't have a Switch. So like, I am not the target audience for this. Because I didn't buy a Switch, uh, uh, my own, uh, so I have not played it uh, on my own. So you know, I'm definitely not the right one person. Uh, I mean, it ultimately doesn't matter because does Smash have Toe from Avatar? Nope. I mean, yeah. Look, doesn't have. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in that um, Nickelodeon one that's gonna make it feel real cool. Uh, for pack one, all the banjo, uh, Gazooie don't like playing as that okay yeah i played a little bit of banjo and didn't hate it yeah i mean honestly it's mostly just that like my entire timeline exploded at one point uh and that was fun it was fun to see people like lose their goddamn minds especially since it was like kingdom hearts kingdom hearts sora oh and th and then my twitter became there's a twi there's a twitch hack and then my thing became, wait, these people make that much money? Fuck them. Um, which I hate. I hate so much. And it's also led in to today. Uh, we've had more of that. Um, because uh, part of this was uh, having people having access to finding out. Uh, the T, no, I believe that was Tuesday was the, uh, was the Smash News. And Wednesday was that, I think, because my timeline, I, I want to say that was Tuesday. And then Wednesday was that. That's what my time. My timeline was like Sora Tuesday. And then Wednesday was like, you have a great stream, Harold. Thanks for being here. Thanks for hosting. Uh, appreciate that. I'll talk to you soon. Because um, it was Lizzo was like, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. It, it, time, time is meaningless and days don't mean anything. And I don't know what's happening most of the time anyway at, at this point. So, like, who, who knows? But, um, okay. So, how do these fit? This looks like this sticks out here. So, that's going to stick out like that. And that's going to go like this. All right. These are all black and white and sometimes a little hard to decipher. But I'm doing my best to figure this thing out. All right. So, this is going to go this this is the undercarriage of our ship here so uh this will start to make more sense as we build it uh yeah uh time is slushy indeed so um so here's the thing um everything you enjoy costs money to do this costs money what i'm doing here right like the hope is that the money I, I get in for Patreon and Twitch and, uh, you know, the occasional uh, AdSense hitting up over $100 and I get a, a YouTube payout. Uh, the hope is that that can, that that is more than the cost of buying model kits and video games. I don't buy that many games per year to play on stream, but I do buy some and I buy a lot of model kits, right? So the hope is that that evens out that I'm not losing money by doing this, right? That's the hope. So that's me small time streamer there are people that don't make any money because they haven't hit affiliate or they have hit affiliate and they haven't made any money really they don't they it, they, it takes months before they get a payout uh and they're investing all their time right and then there are people who are doing it they're making it happen they're doing a bunch of cool shit and they're out there and it costs money to make that stuff so when people are like, wait, Critical Role makes how much? It's like, one, be excited that they make money because they make a thing you like and it's cool that they get paid to make the thing you like. And two, for a moment, ponder the costs associated with making the thing you like. 
because there's a staff, there's a bunch of people you don't know that make the thing you like behind the scenes, that edit the thing you like, that light the thing you like, that, that operate the cameras for the thing you like, and the audio for the thing you like, and the editing, and they do the research, and they meet with people. There's a person, there are at least one to two people that get paid to put makeup on the people that make the thing you like. And if Critical Role isn't the thing you like, there's another thing you like, and that fucking costs money. Uh, an example I posted on Twitter uh, was um, uh, was the uh, behind the scenes for the first season of Dimension 20, another Let's Play thing that does a lot of work in production. There's like miniatures for every character. There are sets that are built. There's lighting and all this other stuff. Um, it's shot very well and edited very well. Uh, multiple cameras, all that stuff. Uh, that costs a lot of money. And that and the behind the scenes video that I posted was from the first season and they've now done a lot more and they've increased their production as they've gone. All right, so this is gonna be, this is the three prong. So this theoretically fits into these. So if I've done something wrong here, if this doesn't fit in, if this part doesn't fit in here, then I've done something wrong. Uh, and I'll have to go back and say, oh no, that does fit in. Okay, great. I did get that to work. I just have to get these lined up right and then I'll go in. But yeah, um, Dimension 20 costs a lot of money. Anything that you like costs money. Now maybe the thing you like is, whoa, that flew away. That was very bad. Oh, shit, that fucking broke. Okay. I tried to force that, and a thing broke. So, I have to, I'm going to replace this part with another part, and I'm going to save this. Uh, I think a good way to phrase the feelings is, I don't mind if things cost money to create. I just want certain people, investors, people who are born rich to not be making so much money i mean okay uh hold on a second let me go i gotta get some liquid cement because i gotta repair this while i get a replacement part look do i want people who produce things that go on twitch to make more money and have twitch slash amazon make less of that money Yes, I would like that. I would like that very much. It would be great if that was the case. Uh, but unfortunately, for people to make money, other people also have to make that money. It, it sucks that that is the case, but that is the case. That uh, for, for some people that you like to make money, other people you don't like also is, are, are also going to make that money. Uh, and I know that that sucks, and I agree that that sucks. Uh, I think that doesn't have to be the, okay, things maybe shouldn't cost so much to make either, like make people things and also be fed and have a place to live. The tea, I mean, I don't disagree with you, but that's not the conversation I'm having. That's a different conversation. Like, things cost a lot of money to make. Good things cost money. No, it's okay. It's okay. I'm just not arguing that. I'm arguing that people think that they should get things for free and that people shouldn't get paid. And that sucks. People, people in general think that, well, you know, how are you, why are you making all that money? You shouldn't be making all that money. And it's like, shouldn't they? Why shouldn't they make money? They made a cool thing that people really like. Why shouldn't they be able to be paid for that? Like, why not? Why shouldn't they get paid? But that is the belief, right? That like, oh, well, if you can afford a nice house and you can pay back all your student loans, fuck you. And it's like, why? Why fuck them? Why, 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 why feel, why, why is that your, why is that how people, some people feel? Not everybody, but some people feel that way. And I think that sucks. I think that absolutely sucks that some people out there are like, no, you shouldn't be making money because I don't have a lot of money. So you shouldn't have a lot of money. And I do agree that there is definitely a conversation that needs to happen about a lot of things when it comes to wealth and equality. I'm not here to say that those conversations shouldn't be happening. But I am saying be mad at people 
that figured out a way to get paid to make the thing that you like. Because here's the, the real honest truth. And it sucks, but it's true. If people don't get paid, they stop making the thing you like. Like, they, they burn out. They run out of savings. They, they completely run out of chances and opportunities to continue to make the thing that you like. And then they stop making the thing you like. And then you don't have the thing you like anymore. And I don't know how to, like, convince people. Every few years we have to convince people that, that people should be able to get paid to make things. And I, and I don't know how to fix that problem. Uh, I'm not grading our way point says, I don't think a Twitch chat is a place to do it. Sorry. Uh, uh, I'm on that side. Yeah. I hear you. The T I mean, look, I'm, I'm mostly just mad for people who, who work very hard and manage to get paid to do the thing that they worked very hard to do. Uh, and then they get abuse for it. And I'm always going to be mad about that. Like, look, yes, there is a larger conversation to be had about, did I put this on? Did I even put this on right? Uh, there's certainly a larger conversation to be had about like the name, all the, all of this stuff. Like, I think there, there is room to have these conversations. Uh, the fact that I broke this part is so infuriating right now. And I'm not making, I'm not making my point correctly because I did just break a thing here. Uh, so I am a little, uh, I am a little frustrated at the moment, so I have to figure out which one is the one I broke. It's so this is uh, one here. All right, so that's this one goes here. Uh, so yeah, so I'm not make, necessarily making my point uh, too well at this point because I am dealing with a broken part on this kit. Uh, uh, Razgris says the, there's reality and there's ideology. We can all agree that it would be great if American capitalism was exploitative, uh, but Amazon owns Twitch. And it's exploitative and it's not the fault of the creators. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, look, I wish there was a good competitor to Twitch. I wish there was a good competitor to Twitch that people wanted to use and wanted to put their money into so that people could could stream and make a, an income based on their streams. Uh, I would love that. Unfortunately, we don't have that. Um So, but they're not, they're still exploited by Twitch because they could make more, because Twitch still takes a lot of money from them. Just because you have, look, here's the other thing, right? If you are very popular on Twitch, Twitch does everything it can to make sure you're good and you stay good. Twitch wants their top earners to continue to be their top earners because those people bring audiences in. Because I bring in... 15 to 20 views if I'm lucky. So Twitch that will never care about me. Uh, but they are business partners. You're right. They sign contracts. They make money. I don't fault them for making money. I don't, I'm never going to fault people for making money in this fucked up system because the system is fucked up and they figure it out. They somehow figured out a way to make money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and we're just always going to disagree on that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm never going to fault people for doing the thing they did, working really hard, and somehow managing to succeed despite uh, all attempts by many people to make sure that folks don't ever get a chance to do anything cool and, and make money doing it. Um, that's partially because I'm a creator. And I would love to see a return on uh, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. And it's very unlikely that that'll ever happen for me. So uh, part, of, part of that is that. Part of that is me just being like, well, I don't think that's ever going to happen for me. And it's a shame. So I don't fault people that manage to make it happen for them. Uh, also, uh, so a lot of those top creators don't have lives. They stream. It's their job and they're good at their jobs, but they don't have anything. Uh, they have empty houses full of bullshit. So I don't necessarily envy them for the lives they live. Um, but I also don't blame them for 
somehow managing to get paid uh, because it's so hard to get paid. Uh, doing anything that you actually enjoy is like almost impossible. So yeah, I think that's just going to be a fundamental thing we don't agree on. And I think that's, a, that's all right. I don't, I don't mind that. Okay. So this is, this is the piece. This is so that that's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to repair this part, but I'll try to repair it. No, 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 I'm going to go. So it looks like that is how that looks. Yeah. So it would be like this. Yeah. So that's how that's going to go. That's where it broke. That's how it would go. All right. We'll see if this liquid cement adheres those two pieces together. It might not. Uh, yeah, no, I understand. Uh, one scene in Futurama where Leela has to tell Fry, you're not rich. And Fry's like, yeah, but I might be one day. And look. It just, we're never going to agree on that. And that's, a, that's all right for me anyway. I don't know if that's all right for you, but for me, it's all right that we're never going to agree on that. Uh, that people that somehow that worked really hard uh, and somehow managed to trick the system into actually benefiting them, I don't have an issue with. Now, people that come into an industry they have nothing to do with, that are doing it just for money, that have no interest in the thing that they're doing, I don't necessarily love that. Uh, yes, there's absolutely no correlation between working hard and being rich, 100%. That's what I'm saying they somehow managed to also make money doing the thing they like to do. And that's incredibly rare and complete and, and sucks that it's compare, compare, uh, completely rare. Uh, um, and also not all of the top 1000 people, uh, you know, or the people who are doing it on Twitch, it's not like all of them are rich because like, because that's the real thing like about like using critical role as an example is like, that's an incredibly expensive operation. It's a business. It's not five people uh, with webcams splitting ad revenue. It's like an it is a production and it's an operation. It is a business. So like, yeah, are people doing well because of that. Sure, but like, it's not like they're. It's not like everyone's just like, well, next year I retire because of this. Like, that's not the reality of it. And yeah, if they didn't live in LA and have other jobs and do other things, sure, there's a definite chance that they could take that money and retire with it. Uh, but it's not the same thing as, you know, like I think about one of the top Hearthstone streamers who's just like, yeah, I have a house in Minnesota. Like I own a house in Minnesota and uh, I'm good. Uh, Except he's not because he's quitting streaming. Uh, he's looking for a regular job because he's so burnt down on streaming that he's like, it's not feasible for me to continue to do this. Um, yeah. I mean, the T, you, the thing is, the T, you don't know that. There's no way for you to, to know that. So I'm not going to even argue that. You don't know people's lives. You don't know. You, you can't know that. Like, we do know that there are people who can succeed in this particular thing because they don't, they, because they have, they have a backup. They have funds. They have a day job and they don't sleep because when they're not doing their day job, they're working or they worked very hard for a long time. They took all their money. They moved into a hovel that has decent Internet and they're put pursuing it. They're going into debt to pursue it. They have people supporting them. They have a partner who is the, the, the breadwinner in the family. Yes, there are many, many people who are doing that at the top, at the middle, at the bottom. Uh, everybody's circumstances are different and there are plenty of people that can't pursue this because they have other things, but like, and there are some people that lucked out, right? They're the least funny person in their comedy group. 
They are the person that uh, agreed to do it because they were looking for another person. They have a good situation so they can try to do this thing and they can go for it. Uh, there are a lot of different circumstances for people who are doing well out there. Uh, and yeah, sure, people that are already doing well can can do better. It's, it, it is certainly way easier to be somebody who uh, was, who has already done well to then do even better than that. That's certainly the case. That has been the case. Like, I'm not even going to argue that, but, um, but yeah, I mean, like, and then there are also, you know, yeah. And there's probably more stories of that than there are. Uh, I moved to this country. Uh, I picked a video game, you know, that is based on a video game that I like. Turns out I'm really good at it. Uh, I worked really hard at it. I was able to quit my day job because my side gig is now my day job and now I get to do it. And then I have other, and, and like, and then people give me money to play their games when I'm not playing my game, uh, the other games and all that. Like, yeah, there's not a lot of instances of that, but there are instances of that. There are, there are instances of people being able to pull, pull themselves into a good situation. Uh, and a lot of that is certainly luck. And it's like, yeah, it's like, you know, like, that's awesome. I'm psyched for that. But yeah, I'm I'm not here to be like, oh, people that make a thing I like shouldn't get money to make that thing. Like that that is that was the point I was making. And it is in the context of big, you know, people that are doing very well for themselves. But it also is people that are just putting investing a lot that are working uh, hard at the thing. Like I don't fault them for being able to be in a position where they can make a little bit of money while they do it like i've just yeah that 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 is the point that i was making there all right i finally got this attached this took way too long to get going here but we're finally on step five which is going to be other parts of this so we'll move on to step five now of this kit um but yeah anyway also um uh you know we can talk broadly about this uh but in but uh, as i think i said this i tweeted this and uh, i stand by this particular point that like um it's all well and good but like uh people's chats are not the place to talk about like if you are the kind of person that's like i want to see what these people are making money wise their chat is not the place to discuss that uh, i don't think anybody here would necessarily do that uh because you know, it is a, it is a thing. Like some some people are very open and are, you know, happy to talk about how they do. Like I'm always happy to talk about my subscriber numbers, and I'm happy to, and my uh, how much money I make on Patreon is available, and people can see that. Like uh, I've never had an issue uh, talking about those things, but I do sometimes have an issue if it if it's a person that's like I don't want to talk about that. Like you know, it's like yeah. People that don't want to chat about the money that they make through things like I'm totally uh, willing to give people the chance for their own privacy if that's something that they're they're hunting for. Now, obviously, there are times where uh, that doesn't work. Like, like if you're running a Kickstarter or a GoFundMe or something like that, and you're trying to raise funds. And you should be honest about the sources of uh, income that you have. I think that that's like just like a thing that like, yeah, should just be said like, OK, well, if you're, you know, if you're uh, trying to, to raise money, then it should be a well aware of like how you're doing and what you're doing with it or what the money goes to and that kind of stuff. Like, I think that should be uh, spoken about. But if you're like, well, I am. Right now, I'm, you know, earning this money doing this and this money doing that. And I don't really want to talk about it on stream because uh, a big part of streaming is giving a lot of public information out to people and sharing a lot of your personal stuff with people. And some people have, you know, times where they don't want to do that. They have, they have limits. They have their limits. And I can appreciate that. All right. So... The shading on this sometimes isn't great. It goes like this. Okay. All right. So this goes like this. And this is going to go like this. This is the piece that broke. So I'm very nervous about 
attaching that. Um, because I'm like, yikes, I don't want to break this. All right, so this would go like this here, and that's going to go in here. I think that's going to go in here. Gonna, let's go. Yes, I think that's right. All right, so I got to get this piece in here and then hope that it doesn't break. Or it does. It it did. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, well. Hopefully, uh, that liquid cement will will hold there. Uh, yeah. Uh, you had a couple in your uh, mistress. Oh, oh yeah. Those pins always make me nervous. I had a couple in your uh, paddleboard kit. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like. It's just tough because this plastic doesn't feel as thick uh, as I would like it to be. And the weird thing is this kit like really wants you to like take it apart and reassemble it uh, in various different ways. And I'm like, uh, that doesn't feel great to me. So I definitely think we're going to build this the first time and then we're going to call it quits on the build after we do that. Because I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to like keep coming back to this build. That doesn't seem like a thing I would do, but I don't know. Who knows? Maybe I'll be like, oh, actually, this was really fun. So let's take it apart and see what we can do. Yeah. All right. Get to the other. Mm-mm. Add it. Uh oh. Hmm. Uh oh. There's a piece that this is gonna go to that, and then there's one of these flat things here, and I have lost it. Oh there it is. I found it. Found the piece I needed. Okay. So that's C1. Yeah. Um yeah, I think that this uh this kit I'm like here a little worried about. It. Um, New York Comic Con is happening. It has started, and that is weird to me because I'm not there. Of course, I did miss last year because last year was um, the uh, um, the vi virtual, so I wasn't there in person. But this is the year I could be there in person, and it would be my tenth New York Comic Con. So that is very weird to me that I am not there. Uh, I feel very strange about that because I would like to be there um it's yeah it's a it's an odd thing i uh new york comic con is huge you know it's in the javits center it takes up the whole thing it is a lot there's a lot going on there uh what do you like to see at the con so worst of it um uh panels you know i have friends that do panels there sometimes they're comedy stuff sometimes they are just like oh here is a, a you know uh, my friend's doing this kind of like interview thing um i don't necessarily go in for uh trying to like see every celebrity or anything like that i'm not going there for like autographs and that kind of thing um the cosplay i always always love seeing the cosplay i think people do an exceptional great job every year and it's really fun to see that and then artist alley i think artist alley is a big reason why i'm there uh seeing just people do incredible work um uh i've talked about this on stream before that i'm way into um uh um like trying to get batman art like funny or weird art uh for the old dark knight because i have a lot of art of that uh so i i usually look for something like that if something if somebody's selling something that will fit into that i'll go to artist alley for that and there are a lot of really really good artists that come through um i have a few friends that uh usually uh, table at Artist Alley, so I will be able to see them, and so that is always nice to see uh, some people doing some stuff that I like. Uh, so I'll usually uh, try to find my friends uh, and catch up. Yeah, and it's, it's it's a lot of people watching. Um, I have friends that also have tables, and so it's a chance to go see what they're doing, uh, catch up with people that are you know that are, that I only see at conventions. Um, 
yeah, a bunch of stuff. I don't necessarily go for like, like I'm not going for like a sneak preview of this TV show. I don't, I don't care about and have, you know, I don't know anything about, like, I'm not usually going for that. Uh, it's usually like, uh, to see somebody, uh, who's talking or like, Hey, it's a Buffy reunion. Yeah, I'll go to that. That sounds cool. Um, that 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 thing like to me is I'm always way more interested. Or like, I've never seen the White Earp, uh, the Wyona Earp show, but I do know that their fans, uh, the fans of that show, are freaking love that shit so much that it's like infectious. Um, I, a couple of years ago, I worked at near Comic Con, and one of the panels was uh, a Wyatt, uh, a, uh, a Winona Earp thing. And the fans uh, were losing their dang, dang minds. And it was kind of fucking really fun to observe that uh, as an outsider, as like a happy to be there outsider. It was very fun to see people just having such a good time. So excited by everything that was happening. It's like, oh, that's fun. I don't know. I like that. Um, do I look for deals? Sure. I'll go to like the... Um, uh, the third party people that are just selling whatever and trying to trying to make some money, I'll I'll look for stuff like that. Uh, be it uh, model kits. Uh, of course, I'll go into the old uh, premium Bandai, the Bluefin uh, booth, and see if there's anything there that catches my eye. Oftentimes, that's you know, uh, I got that ruby red clear Sazabi real grade um, that I got at uh, New York Comic Con. Um, and I was really happy to get that because that's a beautiful kit. One of my favorite kits I've ever built. One of the best looking kits I've ever, ever assembled. Um, but yeah, a lot of it is just like, it's a good time. Um, San Diego Comic-Con, I've only been to once. I really liked that was way more of a spectacle because it takes over all of San Diego, which is anything in New York is just a thing that happens while the rest of New York happens. And I... I do love that. I do very much enjoy that, uh, like, New York Comic Con is happening in spite of New York, whereas San Diego, uh, which I said, I've only been to once, but San Diego was like, hey, you know, this restaurant is got, uh, like, oh, this restaurant is being sponsored by a movie, and, oh, this FX TV show, um, rented out this water feature and they put a, like a part of a car in there because it's like a spooky Stephen King TV show. So there's just like a car upended, uh, like part of a car upended in this like water in this fountain. So watch this show and all this, it's like all of this stuff happens and you're like, Oh, okay. And every store is like, we've got our Comic-Con specials and like all this stuff. And it just like completely takes over the town and it's, it's pretty neat. Uh, PAX Seattle is like that. Oh yeah. Gen Con I'm sure does that. Yeah. PAX, PAX definitely takes over a portion of Seattle. Um, if a convention is big enough that like, uh, everyone, like, even if you don't care about it, you know about it. Excuse me. Like San Diego Comic-Con Everybody knows it's San Diego Comic-Con time. Even if they're like, I have no interest in that. I'm not going to anything with that. They at least understand that like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's happening. Yes, uh, I am aware of that. Like, I understand that that is a thing that is that is happening. Even if that's not my thing. Like, I get it. Um, let's see. So, do I need, which one do I need? It's the... Yeah, it's the one that has a connector and a connector. So this goes in like this. And that goes in like that. Yeah. All right. Sorry, I'm talking out loud because I'm trying to figure out how all of this works. Because these instructions are okay, but they're not excellent. Yeah, and I'm sure Gen Con like, takes over the whole city. Like, uh, But it is funny because anything that happens in New York is like, you know, all these people were taking the uh, the ACE train to 34th Street uh, at Penn Station and then walking over to Javits Center. That's generally how people were taking the subway to get in. Uh, and it's always very funny to just see people in cosplay because they aren't going to change there. Um, just being like, just 
Like you're sitting next to Iron Man and you're just going about your day. And it's, look, damn it, acknowledge that it's weird that you're standing next to Iron Man. But they won't acknowledge that it's weird that they're standing next to Iron Man. Because acknowledging that something is weird in New York is like, it's not a sin, but it's like unheard of. You don't, like, people are weirder. That, you know, like someone dressed at, up as Iron Man standing next to somebody uh, with like eight bags full of um, like uh, uh, um, I don't know action figures. That's not weird. So like you don't acknowledge it, but it is funny being like I know why this is happening, uh, and I'm sure there are some people who like and you know there are always going to be some people who are just like hey 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 why are you dressed as Spider Man what's going on what is this why are you Spider Man what's happening like there's always going to be people like that. Uh, all right, so now we got to put the the other part of this on here, and we're going to try to attach these parts without anything breaking. Uh, a, a, as you know, uh, we have run into some issue there, and I'm also going to try not to knock this part off because it is barely holding on. Uh, so we're going to put this part in first. Oops, that didn't break; it just came off. So that's great. We we love that here. We love that it just f it came off but didn't break. That's excellent. All right, and then, oops, this part is going to go on here. Snap in, great. And we're going to try to re glue this here, like with cement it here. Really, this is going to have to be fixed off stream because it's just like I'm going to keep bumping it. It's never going to be perfect but I can at least get it going and hopefully the fumes aren't going to wreck my head they shouldn't wreck my head but they might anyway um I've got my uh, Airbnb I've got my uh, uh plane ticket stuff set up for uh PAX Unplugged I have submitted my two panels do I have every guest booked for my panels no one panel, I don't even know if I'm going to have guests. It might just be me and the audience yelling about, you know, trying to figure out anime stuff. Uh, tabletop and card-based anime. Uh, like, I think that might just be that whole panel. And we might, I might not have any guests. But obviously, no, maybe not obviously. Improvised Postmortem will have guests. I just haven't booked them yet. Uh because I don't know who's going to the show. So I at least have them submitted so they're in the system. And then I can edit and figure out who I got to put in there and all that. I have some time to do that. So that's good. Um, okay. That's the last of that piece. This is going to go into D5. Uh, we will take a pause for the cause in a moment or two. I'll talk about ways you can support the channel. Uh, and then we'll... Uh, We'll get into uh, more model kit building here. Uh, we're dedicating today to this kit. Uh, so I ran a poll for my $10 patrons. My $10 patrons uh, over on patreon.com. Uh, get to decide what I build uh, uh, next for my backlog. And I thought for sure the AE86, the initial D car, uh, was going to win. Uh, a kit that was advertised uh, incorrectly uh on uh on gundam planet as being a snap kit which is, is not a snap kit uh it doesn't necessarily need a lot of paint it will want paint but it doesn't necessarily need a lot of paint but it is definitely not a snap kit uh and uh i am definitely bummed to find out that out uh that that is not a snap kit uh that was a, a big disappointment to find out um uh, I thought for sure that was going to win the poll. Um, it did not. What won the poll was the entry grade Conan from Detective Conan and uh, Greninja, which is not an entry grade. It's just a uh, a Pokemon model kit. Uh, I put those two together because neither will take a full stream. So I was just like, oh, I'll just build those at the same time. That'll be fun. Um, so I so that won the poll. So that is the next thing I'm going to be building which will be Saturday stream. Because, uh, yeah, because either way, I'm going to finish this up tonight. Uh, okay, so this is going to go 
These two have to go in somewhere. Okay, so this goes in like this. Wait, where does that go? Hmm. This goes in here. And there's an arrow up. This goes in up. And then these two peg in. Okay, I think this is right. All right, so. No, but where does that go? Mm hmm. Sorry, I'm making such a frustrated noise. But the truth is, I'm frustrated because I don't know how this works. I'm like, oh, let me get better light here. All right, that goes in there. And that does that go up this? And that goes, oh, okay. So maybe this goes in here. Oh, okay. This goes into the lower portion. Nope, that doesn't look right. Does that go into this portion? That doesn't look right. How does this work? What does this do? That doesn't look right either. This goes into this. I'll figure this out. We'll take a pause of the cause in a moment or two. I'm just going to, you know, that goes in like that. That part breaks off, and I'll fix it after the stream. Um, these would have to then go into that. Okay, so then that goes in like that. That doesn't look right. Hmm. I'm going to make this photo bigger, because sometimes that is helpful. Okay, there's the top part of that. This doesn't look... Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Hmm. Okay. So the bottom one. These look like they're up higher. Did I do this right? Where's the other part that I'm looking at? Maybe I'm not building this one? I thought I was. Yeah, I am. Hmm. I can't really re I I can't recommend this. Uh I'm not having any sort of luck uh with this kit at all. And I yeah, I can't recommend this particular model kit uh i think it yeah it seems like it's a pain yeah um like i i'm just like staring hmm yeah this this fucking yeah okay no this part is on wrong maybe yeah yeah, all right. Okay, well, we'll go like this instead. Uh, this, like, photocopy-looking instructions do not do it any favors because I am just, like, constantly looking at this going, like, am I doing this right? I don't feel like I am. And that's a terrible feeling to just be like, did I do this right? Is this how it's supposed to look or be? Constantly feeling like, no, I'm not doing this right. Oh, let me try to get this back part on here. Hmm. It's such a fun idea. The idea of this thing is so fun. Like, oh, it's a little cat carrier that is also a mech. Like, I love the premise of this kit so much, but the execution has been not 
particularly fun for me. Uh, and, you know, hey, not every stream has to be fun, but also I'm doing this because I like doing this. So, um, for what I see, the instruction looks like a mess. Yeah, it's just like very tiny things and the photos are, all, look, it doesn't, you don't have to do black and white. You, you don't have to do color, I should say. It can be black and white. But I absolutely hate this thing. Uh, I don't know exactly what I'm doing wrong at any given part. Yeah, I don't, I don't love these instructions. And of course, there's, there's multiple things you can build with it. Uh, but yeah, I would not recommend this. Anyway, let's take a pause for the cause. We'll come back with fresh eyes and I'll see if I can salvage this in some way. Uh, this is definitely going to be the last time I work on this kit uh, will be tonight. So I would like to try to get some progress done on it. But I don't know how that's going to work because I don't think I'm doing it right. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, um, we'll get back to it right now. Just because they're like, hi, it's the Build with Bear Workshop. I'm Pat Bear. I'm going to talk to you about ways you can support the channel. You're under no obligation to do any of these things. But if you would like to, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, if you're, first off, if you're a currently subscriber, you can throw the bear cave, the Lego, the site, the moat into the chat. Let the people know you're a sub uh, uh, using your Twitch Prime uh, 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 token because you linked your Amazon Prime with your Twitch. Uh, or using cash money, always appreciated for that. Um, uh, and of course, thank you all for being here. And if you're not a subscriber, that's okay. You don't have to be one, but it would be nice. I'll talk about ways to support the channel here. Uh, there are various ways that involve money, and there are ways that don't involve money, and both of those are great. Um, Patreon.com slash Pat Bear is another way to support me. Uh, uh, I have a $1, a $3, a $5, and a $10 tier. Uh, if you're watching this later on YouTube, you can find all these uh, links in the show description. Uh, speaking of YouTube, I have a YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash Pat Bear is a way to uh, support me there. Um, uh, uh, Subscribing is free, obviously, but you can join. There's a membership. It's $2 a month. Uh, that's pretty neat. So if you wanted to support me uh, financially that way, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, of course, not required uh, by any means. Um, uh, if you join my YouTube, you get a video uh, one day early. All my Wednesday videos you get on Tuesday. Uh, it's a small little thing that I can do. Um, Direct donations are, are here through Coffee and PayPal and Streamlabs. Everything I make through direct donations, PayPal, uh, Streamlabs, Coffee, uh, through YouTube, through Patreon, through Twitch, all goes to buying model kits. And, uh, you know, that because I buy these kits, I build these kits. And then I buy more kits and I build those kits. I continue the process ad infinitum. Uh, uh, I can't say that word. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, but yeah, I will continue to buy model kits is the thing that I will say. Uh, so if you continue to buy them, uh, you, you know, you can support me. I will continue to buy kits and then build them on stream. Uh, speaking of kits, if you would like to uh, buy a kit for me to build and I'll say, hey, all this stuff in my backlog, uh, not yet. You stay in the backlog. I got to build something that somebody bought off my wish list. You could do that. Um, uh, this was bought off my wish list anonymously. Thank you to the anonymous person that bought this. Appreciate it. Uh, I've got Lego sets, uh, inexpensive stuff, expensive stuff, uh, high grades, master grades, all kinds of different things on my wish list. Uh, things that have dropped in price since I last looked, things that are way too expensive, like a high grade for $40. Get the fuck out of here. But that's what it is. Uh, that for some reason, the Victory Gundam V2 Assault Buster is $49 on amazon right now because everything is expensive don't necessarily buy that but you could you could buy anything on my wish list uh and i will build it uh it will jump the queue uh, as a thank you it's the least i could do uh and alternatively you could buy a gift card to usa gundam store you would send me the code that you would get your gift card code that you would get in your email and then i will build it on stream uh, uh i'll buy something from usa gundam store and then it'll jump the queue and i'll shoot a separate video about things that you bought optional obviously but if you wanted to you could um let's see uh i have a discord that is a way to support me that costs you nothing you join my discord um uh, it's a nice little place people people post uh stuff they're working on i post build photos at the end of every stream um uh it's a good time so feel free to jump in on that one uh what else do i want to uh to do um 
let's see what do i got what i got here i'm gonna build um links i got a couple links that's what i want to share with you uh let's check out the links pat bears anime club um it's a new season of anime if you want to know what i thought about stuff that happened last season uh and then you also uh want to know what i am uh what i i'm into this season or what i was interested to check out this season you can check that out there um let's see what happened here somebody sent me a message and uh, oh yeah uh harold uh harold replied to a thing knowing the reference i was making which i appreciate it anyway sorry that got, caught me off guard um build with bear uh best of build with bear did you know that you can hit the clip that button when something happens on stream that you're like i like that thing that happened on stream I want to talk, uh, I'm going to uh, hit the clip that button, and then Pat's going to make a video about it, uh, take a clip from it. Well, this happened on stream. Uh, this this clip, the best of the is me making a shocking discovery about the very nature of all elite wrestling. AEW has a secret, and I revealed that secret in this clip. Uh, uh, I thought that was funny. Um, anyway... I'm going to talk about some anime, and then I'm going to talk about some manga. And also, I made an executive decision. I don't like this kit. I'm not finishing it. I will. Uh, the person who has chosen to remain anonymous, I actually know who they are. And I will give them their money back if they want me to. But this sucks, and I don't want to keep building it. So we're going to build Greninja. We're going to build Greninja. Because fuck this kit. I don't want to work on it. I'm going to the next thing. I bought a Greninja. We're going to build a Greninja. It'll probably just be in this whole stream. But like, I don't want to go back to this kit. Uh, like I said, someone bought this off my wish list. But because I know who they are in person and they are a friend of mine, uh, I am going to say I will give their money back to them. I will pay them money to not finish this kit because I hate it. And guess what? Look, some days are incredibly great days and i am at 115 percent pat bear and i am kicking ass and running on all cylinders and some days i'm like 35 percent pat bear and this is a like this is like a 50 i'm like 50 percent where i'm at and i don't got i don't have the motivation to work on a kit that sucks that i don't like working on um so i'm calling an audible is the very rare Pat Bear Audible. Um, hell, I built. Uh, uh, there's a future child's play charity goal to get you to finish this kit. Yes, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe there'll be a like Pat finish the Neko kit thing for a fundraiser if I'm involved in a fundraiser, or like um, uh, the next time we do the Plamo Weekender. Uh, some days or the other days. Yes. The Plamo Weekender, I was just like, uh, if I raise a certain amount of money, I'll go back and finish this bad kit that I don't like. Um, but, hey, life's too short. So I'm going to edit my stream info, and I'm going to add in um, Greninja. Uh, Ninja. And we're going we're gonna to work on Greninja. Uh, I might have spelled it wrong in there, whatever. I'll spell it right when i put up this video uh but yeah this thing is bad and i don't like it and i'm not going to keep working on it so i'm going to move all these parts aside for the neko busho treasure chip uh maybe there's a reason that i only know one person who's built one of these but uh that was not fun and i don't want to keep working on it so we're gonna move over to greninja um we'll get these all lined up here uh, also, I'm going to talk about anime because there's new anime while we while we get in this. Uh, uh, so let's uh, let's talk about some anime that came out. Um, OK, so there are isekai this season I'm not watching, but one of the isekai that I am watching is a show called The World's Finest Assassin Gets Reincarnated in Another World as an Aristocrat, which is it based on a light novel? You fucking know it's based on a light novel. Don't even try to say it's not based on a light novel. It definitely is. Uh, it is a... So here's the thing. This is obviously going to be... Not obviously. 
This anime is based on the light novel. I have read some of the manga. I did not love this manga, but I do enjoy the premise. The thing is, when it actually ramps up, I don't, I didn't love it that much, and I actually stopped reading it. But I did like some of the premise. I think some of the premise is really interesting. Okay, we're going to start with stickers, because of course we are. Um, so yeah, I did think some of the premise of this is solid. Uh, it's just overall uh, not my favorite story. But the idea that instead of a hapless, um, neat, or uh, or like college dropout, uh, schlubby dude who gets reincarnated or, or transferred to another world and goes on an adventure... What happens when a real old man who is a trained assassin dies and then is reincarnated to be an assassin? He's reincarnated specifically because he was an assassin to continue to be an assassin, but now in a mystical, magical world. That is a premise that I don't dislike at all. I think is kind of a neat premise. So we're coming into that with me being interested in it. But anyway, we start with the opening song we don't even start with like an intro uh, animation we just start with the opening which is kind of rare um it starts with rich people at a private auction Uh oh it's a slave auction it's young ladies we find out that these ladies have been kidnapped uh from their towns and their towns were ransacked and it was meant to look like it was uh bandits that just raised a town yes dirty the opening song for this anime is pretty fucking good. Uh, I, I think it's it's pretty solid uh, as tunes go um, for openings for for isekai. Um, yeah, not bad. Um, uh, and one of the auction girls who has been crying and really doesn't want to be there. That was an act. She's actually undercover and she just um, uses magic to make a gun appear, and then she just starts blasting people. Basically, if you are at this illegal auction, it is cool for you to die, because they are just getting wiped the fuck out. Everyone's just getting shot. Uh, another girl who was posing as a maid starts shooting, or she starts using a bladed weapon to take out guards, and they're just, like, kicking ass. And then uh, we pull back to see that there is a third girl who is, where, who is using uh, binoculars, so that another dude can use uh, a dude that we haven't seen, a young man who's our main character, he can use a magical sniper rifle. And he's going to take out the person in charge of all this, uh, which we don't see him do because when he goes to sh the fire, we cut to the past, Japan, modern day, and there's an old man, and he's a sniper, and he's got a, a lady helping him out, uh, spotting, and he kills some mafia dudes. Um, and then it looks like, uh oh, there's a drone a border patrol is after him. Uh, they got to evade some people and she's new to this. So he's got to give some tough love to this basically trainee, uh, because, uh, stop me. If you heard this before, don't stop me. I have to keep doing this. Uh, this is his last day on the job because he is retiring because he's an old man, but he's going to become a trainer. He's going to train the next generation of assassins. Um, it's the last day and his, his last job. He's getting on a plane. He's going to Japan. She's going with him. But, uh, guess what? That was a fucking setup because, uh, the organization that raised him, he literally was raised to be an assassin from, from uh, being a child. Uh, well, they're, you know, they're taking him out. He's going to die. He's on a plane. They have, they have basically blown up the cockpit they've come up with a cover story about there being terrorists uh and he smiles as he get his the plane he is on gets shot by uh, a missile from another plane and he's just like oh they got me and he wakes up in this like crystal world where he is being talked to by a woman that identifies herself as a goddess and she's like okay you know, you can be reincarnated on your world, no problem. You won't remember everything. It's like basically your soul just gets recycled, whole new thing. Or you can be uh, reincarnated and keep your memories and your skills. And you'll be reborn, but you'll have 
you know, you'll you'll still be you. And you'll kind of continue your life. And he's like, okay, well, that one, who do you want me to kill? Because he's like, you didn't, you're not offering me this. You're offering this because I'm an assassin. I'm an elite assassin. And the goddess who speaks, she uses like some English in random places and has this like, she's got a punchable voice. You know what I'm talking about? Like this goddess sucks. Like we know, you know that from the way she speaks. Like, okay, she sucks. Uh, she's just like, yeah, I want you to be reborn into a world of magic. And then you're going to kill the hero. And that's the end of the episode. Um, so I will say, the assistant that he is talking to uh, in the in his old man life, she is not in the uh, um, uh, what do you call? It? Uh, she is not in the manga. She might be in the light novel. She is not the manga. It's basically like the manga basically starts with him on a plane talking about retiring, and then he notices that he's been set up. Uh, if I remember correctly, there's a chance I might be wrong. Uh, you know, I might have some of the details wrong, but I believe that is the, that is what's happening there. So, uh, basically, uh, it is just like, they're just like, okay, we'll get to it. Here is this. I, I wonder if it, it's possible that this is stuff from the, uh, the light novel, um, that they took out for the manga, or it also is possible that, this was just a thing wholly created so that he just doesn't have a bunch of monologues. So that way he can like talk to people and maybe it's to like show that he is a badass um, uh, assassin as an old man. I, I don't know. Um, I'm definitely going to stick with this. I don't, I think when the other girls that we saw in this episode, like when we see how they like met him and become part of his crew, I'll be like less interested because that's where I got less interested in the manga. Actually, honestly, it's when the hero shows up that I'm like, I don't know if I like this story. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a weird thing to say. Okay, put the stickers on first. View from above, sticker three, sticker four. And there's a part that folds over and then six and five. Okay, so B1, two. Is this is B two or what? This is B two. Okay. So, um. Anyway, that's the world finest assassin gets reincarnated in other worlds of aristocrat. And now I'm going to talk to you about Mov Love Alternative. Okay. So, how do I describe this show? Okay. So, there was an anime in 2012 called Mud, Mud Love, uh, uh, there were some other words on there. Um, this is not necessarily a follow-up to that. You can watch this on Crunchyroll if you want to watch a let's fight some aliens in our mech things, war is hell anime. If you just want to watch that, you can watch that. You don't have, you. It, it's totally fine. You don't need to know all of the stuff I'm about to tell you. But the context I think is interesting, so I'm going to talk about the context. And the context for this is, Mauve Love Alternative is the second visual novel. Uh, there's a whole visual novel that exists uh, where the first part is a romantic comedy visual novel where you're a dude that has a childhood best friend and then also another girl shows up and you're trying to figure out who you like. And then the second half of the video game, like you beat the first half of the game, and then you can play Ultimate or Unlimited. You can play Unlimited. And Unlimited is you wake up in an alternate universe to your own with some of the similar characters and aliens are attacking. And you got to pilot a mech and fight those aliens. This is the same Move Love. If you buy Move Love, you basically get a dating sim kind of thing, visual novel, and then you get a fucked up alien invasion thing. Move Love Alternative, the visual novel is you wake up three, you you survived, you wake up back where you started in Move Love Unlimited with the knowledge, and it's a reincarnation story, it's a time travel story, I should say, 
you wake up with the knowledge of what is going to happen, and then things change as you change. Also, there is an anime that came out in 2016, uh, which I have to look up the name of. I don't remember the name of it. 2016, there's an anime called like Schwartz and whatever, which is based on the manga, a light novel and the manga, um, which is in the same, it's basically like Germany and Russia dealing with the same alien invasion. And that came out as its own standalone anime. You don't have to watch any of these things. You don't have to know about any of this. I don't even know if any of that matters for this other than it's some of the names. But I love that there is a visual novel of a dating thing that becomes this weird nonsense fighting game style thing, or not, not fighting game, survival against uh, like monsters, uh, monster aliens. And then it also has a like sequel that is like relive the events with the knowledge that you know what happened. And that one is the one that this anime is, I guess, based on somewhat, at least has the name and some of the components. Anyway, uh, in the 1970s, there's an info dump at the beginning of this. In the 1970s, uh, aliens that were stationed on the moon land on Earth. They are referred to as betas. Beta, I should say. They are mut uh, mutated monsters. They are in CGI. Some of them look decent. Some of them look terrible. Uh, but that's that's anime, folks. Uh, doesn't always look great. Uh, so they don't always look great, but whatever. Um, uh, in 1998, important here, 1998, the betas have started to invade Japan. And around the world, the only way to fight these monsters has been to develop mobile suits called Tactical Surface Fighters, which is honestly one of the best not great names. Because it's like, Tactical surface fighters isn't great, but it also isn't a weird nonsense thing. Um, it's like fine. It is a fine name for, for what they are. TSF is what we'll call them. Um, okay, so there's a, a part of Japan has already fallen. They're moving inland. There is a base that is like a line of defense. Um, uh, and we have a new character, our new person who has arrived. Her last crew, she's the only survivor. Uh, Komaki is her name. Uh, and she's getting there. She has combat experience. She's at this training and defense facility. Um, uh, and there's a lot of rookies. So she's meeting up with Kusuno, who's a dude. Kusuno seems like, he seems like male character, main character in this shit. It, we are led to believe that these two characters are going to be important and they, they are going to mean something because they are in this anime and talking to one another. Um, uh, they are getting ready, uh, for training and all that. Um, a lot of people evacuated. Some people won't evacuate, including a little girl who is singing. She is humming a song and it's poignant and you're like, Ooh, uh, but then the music changes from her singing a song to death metal, like heavy metal plays as, uh, the betas attack and, uh, not everybody fucking survives. Some people do not survive at all. Some people do not survive at that. It's bad. Uh, we just get, we, we get some characters that we got, we, we saw their, like, we saw them, we learned their names. Uh, they don't make it. Uh, it does not go good for them. Um, and in some instances, people we don't know die. Uh, there is multiple references to how there is there are other TSFs uh, by the Americans and they are nearby and they have not come to help. But there is supposed to be like an international like treaty, uh, like a support. And so there is a lot of uh, a lot of time, not a lot of time, some time spent on being angry that these uh, that the Americans are not helping, um, which I which I get makes sense. Uh Let's see. Um, Kusuno just manages to defeat a giant beta that has a stupid looking head called like the Fort class. Um, but then his uh, his uh, uh, mech gets damaged and then a bunch of goo pours in and it. I mean, all to its purposes, that dude is dead. The the what was perceived to be could have been the male lead 
uh, is no more. Okay, so we have um, closed eyes or open eyes. We're going to go with open eyes because I think it just looks better because uh, a little more color to it. So we'll do that first. Uh, seven is on this side of the head. Eight is on the other. Okay, so we'll do that. We're applying some stickers here as we work on this. Um, let's see. Um, what other happened here? Oh, yeah. Uh, um, laser. There. So the monsters are all CGI. Some of them look good. Some of them don't look good. Uh, the laser class shoot lasers out of their giant eyes. And they are awful looking. Most of the betas are disgusting looking. This one is particular real bad looking. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, they're destroying everything in their path. They kill a lot of the civilians that were in hiding. But... Um, the survivors of the tactical surface fighters uh, managed to save the little girl that uh, that Komaki heard singing before. She survives. Um, uh, the squad leader, like basically, uh, because the, because Komaki and another girl won't leave, basically dismisses them from service uh, for not following orders. And she's just basically like, "Hey, get out of here." Um, and they do what they evacuate onto some boats uh, and they manage to, to evacuate the area, even though that area has fallen. And the final shot of the episode uh, says 2001, because we jumped three years from 1998 to 2001. And then the man is waking up. And is that man, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, uh, Kusano? I would assume it is. I don't know for sure, but I would assume that that's Kusano. Kusano is waking up. Um, I am going to give this another episode because I want to know what happens to that dude if he is woken up. If the, I want to know, is he waking up, but like, is he going to time travel? Like, alternative, if it is, what parts of the vision... There are questions I want answers to. I don't know if I'm going to watch every episode of this for the whole season. But, like, also, it's weird that this is the mech series. There are several mech anime this season. This is the one I'm most interested in, and I know that that's weird. But this is the one I'm most interested in. Anyway, uh, now the show that I actually want to really talk about. Um, my most anticipated show this season Banished from the Heroes Party, I decided to live a quiet life in the countryside. This is our sometimes action, many times romance, lovely little series. Did we get any romance in this episode? No. But we know it's fucking coming because the closing song shows a character we barely meet in the first episode hanging out with our main character. So it's coming. Uh, I really like this manga. I was really happy when I heard that this got picked up. Um, okay, so basically, there's a demon lord invaded. A lot of people died, taken over territory in the world. But thank God, a hero rose up. And her name is Rudy Ragnos. Uh, and I guess, yeah, sorry, Rudy. Let's call her Rudy. R-U-T-I. Uh, Rudy's there, so things are going to be okay. Um, and, uh, let's see, uh, um, and then we have the opening theme and the opening theme for this thing is so light. It's so breezy. It really makes me think that they are going to tone things down from the manga and the light novel. Um, cause there is a lot of, there's some brutality in the light novel. So my guess is we're not getting that in this. That this is going to be a little bit lighter, a little bit calmer of a show. Maybe it won't be, but that is my guess. Because it's a really nice little opening song, really beautiful, really like setting the romance mood uh, uh, right here. And then we, uh, let's see, uh, what happens next? Um, we see our main character. His name is Red, and he's gathering herbs in the countryside because he is. Uh, working for the guild, he is collecting herbs and selling those herbs uh, because he is an herbalist. 
because uh, those are some of the skills that he, he has. And his goal is to one day open up an apo apothecary, but basically open up his own herbal store because he's got the talent. He just needs to collect enough money. Um, uh, we learned that everyone is given a blessing and then they have skills that they can, they can level up skills to accommodate, uh, accommodate that blessing. And everyone's born with a different blessing. Um, and uh, we find out, uh, we don't know right away what his blessing is. Um, he's keeping it a secret from the adventurers that he runs into. But then we flash back to Red, who is also known as Gideon. And, you know, that's that was his name. He's not Gideon right now, but he was known as Gideon. Red is an alias. He was in the hero's party. And he was basically told, you should quit the party. So his blessing is called the Guide. So he started off with being really strong. He had a lot of uh, knowledge of the world, and he had a lot of fighting experience. Because the hero has tremendous strength, but doesn't have the levels and will grow, but needs someone to take care of it. So uh, the hero, he considered uh, the hero considered her uh, him to be her big brother. Uh, they consider this supposed to be family. I don't know if they're actually related or if they're just like we're each other's family. Like I, I didn't understand that part, uh, so I can't tell you if that is actually the case or not. But they do consider each other to be family, um, e even if they aren't. Uh, um, but basically, he. He hit the point where he's not strong enough. And if you're saying, well, Pat, maybe he's not physically strong, but he probably like does a lot of stuff and we'll find that out later. I'm going to tell you right now, we find that out later that like he handled money. He handled uh, Intel. He did. He like, you know, is an excellent cook and he uh, he handled supplies and all this stuff. He did all this stuff. Uh, and strategy, he compensated for the fact that he wasn't getting any stronger. Uh, anyway, he's convinced to quit, and he basically says, like, hey, I'm a captain of the guard, or the knights, so it would be really bad if they, uh, if they found out that I was fired. So just say that I went out to do uh, some intel, and I never came back. Uh, we'll just say that. And obviously, the dude that is like, you should go, this guy clearly sucks. Like, there's no way this dude doesn't suck and doesn't have ulterior motives for this. Like, this guy clearly uh, sucks ass. But, you know, we don't necessarily have the evidence for that, but we can we can figure that out. Anyway. Um, uh, he's not strong enough to fight the Demon Lord, but he is definitely strong enough to fight an owl bear that shows up. And he knows a lot about medicine. He ends up saving a little kid um, and risking his life in, a, in secret because he doesn't uh, want them to know that he's this strong. But he, he completely wrecks an owl bear uh, without it being a problem and show, and definitely shows up the B-rank adventurer that is trying to act tough, but it's clearly not that strong. Um, comparatively, anyway. Because he can't get any stronger, but he's already definitely strong. Uh, anyway, the kid that he saved, his father is a carpenter, so it looks like Red's getting his shop. Um, we also meet a high-ranked adventurer named Rit, who she arrives, and she is hearing about Red and kind of learning about Red and the fact that they're having this party, uh, and she kind of takes an interest in who Red might be, uh, who he is and who he might be, uh... And we get the sense that maybe they know each other, perhaps. Uh, that there could be something there. Um, then, uh, Rit, let's see, uh, uh, Red celebrates his store opening, and he's like, I promise I'm going to enjoy my slow life. Uh, thanks, everybody, for your help. And the closing theme is really light and shows the two characters together. Because, hey... This is a romance show, and we have now met Red and Rit, and now we're going to find out how they know each other, and then we're going to get our romance in. I absolutely adore, as I said, I absolutely adore this manga. I don't think, I don't know if this was like the best sell of, uh, of this, 
but um, I do think that it is a great story. Uh, you might want to give it two episodes before you decide to pick it up, but uh, I am loving it, and uh, it is the show that I am most looking forward to this season, so I highly recommend um, Banished from the Heroes Party. I decided to live a quiet life in the countryside, because, uh, yeah, um, there is some action in it. it. You will get to see some more action besides just you know, him uh, killing a, an owl bear. Uh, there will be some other stuff that comes up uh with some of the minor characters and i think it's totally worth checking out um and now i will tell you about some manga because i have been reading some manga um and uh i liked some of these and i didn't necessarily love all of them but then i'll tell you about some manga um the first one i'll tell you about is never going home again which is in all caps let's see uh it doesn't look right Okay, so this has got to go. Sorry, I just got to pop this in right away. Um, this is a Cinderella style story. Um, our main character, Chelsea, is the quote unquote worthless twin. It's a fraternal twins. Um, and she's hidden. She is, you know, abused very physically and verbally uh, by her mother. And then uh, on her 12th birthday, her sister gets. Uh, um, appraised by by somebody who's traveling through to appraise because if you are uh, a nobility and you are of a certain uh, uh, you have some abilities that the the country deems to be beneficial you go to, to the royal academy and you could study there and you can learn um, and of course Chelsea isn't going to get appraised because they don't they don't uh, register has, her as being a family member but her sister gets appraised well guess what the appraisal sees younger twin uh or older twin i can't remember but so so he's like where's the other one there are two sit there are two girls and he basically just like no where where is she uh finds chelsea well guess what chelsea has a then as a then unheard of skill called seed cultivation basically any seed that she's seen or thinks about she can make manifest using her mana in her hand and those seeds grow very quickly so she is incredibly important so she gets whisked away uh to the capital uh there's an attendant looking after there you know she's got maids to help her out uh and some of it is her unlearning the abusive behavior that was presented to her um is her sister fucking pissed off that that you know Yes. Is there something more going on there? Probably. I haven't gotten to the point where we've quite... I've gotten to the point where we're like, hey, why are you an asshole to your sister? We don't quite know why, you know, why yet. But we're getting to the point where we're thinking about that. Anyway, Chelsea also, they're like, hey, could you make a seed for a spirit tree? Uh, all of the spirit trees are gone, and they're just kind of legends. And she's like, um... I can try and she does and then she forms a contract with the king of spirits who was just like hey a spirit tree is back cool i recognize that you are very important i will take the form of a cat so that i can hang out with you and protect you which is very handy um also the uh the guy that appraised her is one of the princes so he's and of course he's uh, attractive the guy that's helping her is attractive they're all they also get this kind of like brotherly like support role when they realize how bad her life was uh and are looking out for her. uh all the maids are just like you're 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 great like it's the like i said it's the cinderella thing and then there's a you know the the feeling that like people are going to find out about this so we got to protect you we got to put you under protection of like uh you know the king because you can basically she can solve the country's like food problems and then they also once they also they figure out oh also she can make mystical like she could probably make yidrasil the world tree she could probably make a seed that grows yidrasil uh, or uh where i left off on it she makes um a seed 
uh, basically she makes like a, a seed that will make medicine, but it doesn't have the poisonous part in it. Like she can cultivate that as much as she thinks about it. So she can make like uh, a treatment for uh, an illness, basically. Um, yeah, it, it, it's a great little story. I think Never Going Home Again is pretty rad as far as uh, mangas go. Um, it seems I came to another world. What should, now what should I do? I didn't love. Um, I think it's okay. Uh, basically, um, MC gets summoned to a fantasy world and dumped there. No knowledge, no meaning a goddess, no, no whatever. Just like, hey, I'm here. I don't know what I'm going to do. But his grandfather trained him in survival techniques. So he learned some survival techniques. Uh, he meets a girl and saves a girl. And then in it, in, and because they can't communicate properly at first. Um, he does his best to like, like he's like, he puts his weapon down and like shows up basically like, Hey, I don't mean any harm to you, but that is apparently how you propose in, uh, in her village. So she's just like, yeah, you saved my life. I will definitely marry you. And he's like, wait, what? I should have point at, I should say at this point, that this particular young lady is 15 years old. And not like anime, this isn't a problem 15. He definitely is like, you are too young. I, do, I know that I don't look as old as I am because of something to do with what happened to me. But no, I'm not going to marry you. I don't think I, we should get married because you are 15. Uh, and he has like a genuine actual problem with it, which is unfortunately very rare for anime and so i was pleasantly surprised that he was like oh actually this is bad so that was good um uh it's not great I'm, i don't think i'm gonna keep reading it but uh one thing i i did i did enjoy that also uh his partner uh when he starts becoming an adventurer so that he can you know earn earn money uh is uh um a fox girl and she seemed like a fun character but i don't know if it's going to get i don't i don't know where it goes and i'm not particularly engaged in finding out um let's see uh the third one is the legendary weapon became my bride when i overwhelmed the production job and this one is like the name of it implies that it's weird and it is weird it's a it's a weird show or a weird uh book but basically um, our main character was a tester on a video game and he worked on balancing legend, like particularly he balanced legendary weapons, but also he played the game a lot and he got very strong in the game. So all his stats are like really high and unnecessarily high. Like he's a blacksmith, but he also is a strong fighter and all this stuff because he has production and all that. Anyway, uh, he wakes up in the game world or a world that's like the game world. Um, and, uh, the person that finds him, he eventually figures out is the human form of a weapon that he created and she has memories of him. Uh, it's so slow paced. It's like, here's the thing. And then we're going to jump back in time and introduce a character we won't see. Uh, and we'll go back and like, look, you and I, as the reader, know immediately that that sword, is, this girl is the legendary sword, but it takes him a really long time to figure that out. And yeah, I don't think this was a good uh, manga. I do, I do think there was like some stuff that was interesting. Like I do like the idea of, uh, you know, like I was a, I, I was a tester. So I have all these legendary weapons that didn't work in the game. And I, I, you know, I consider them my children because I leveled them up slowly, but I can't use them because they weren't implemented in the game. But now that I'm here, I get to do cool shit with this. Like, I don't know, that's kind of interesting. And I guess it maybe is interesting that like he's, that that's like the lady that likes him. Although the title saying that it's his bride is weird. I don't know. It's a weird thing. Uh, it's not bad, but it's not great. Um... Uh, we'll be, I'll be panel lining this in the future. I'll be doing that on Saturday. Uh, on Saturday, I'm going to finish this kit. 
um, the Greninja, and I'm also going to uh, work on the Conan kit. That'll be the next thing I do there. I'll show you what the Conan kit looks like. It's right here. It, it's just Conan. It's the entry grade. Um, it will have almost no mobility to it because that's what entry grades are. They're inexpensive, but they uh, but and they're kits and they look pretty neat. I'm sure the eyes are stickers. I hope there's not many more stickers to it. But also, I can imagine the bow tie is a sticker, and I can imagine the button on his coat is a sticker. But anyway, I'm excited to work on uh, on Conan as well. Um, well, we'll finish this kit. All we have to do now is the uh, the arms. Uh, yeah, that, that's all we have left is, is that, and then we can uh, and the weapons. We can attach the weapons to the hands. He's got throwing stars and a, like a, and a blade, but he's got a big old water weapons water weapons because you know it's a water pokemon anyway uh that's gonna do it for us tonight i'm gonna wrap up a little earlier than normal we are gonna raid uh we will go uh, and raid a stream i want to thank everybody who decided to come hang out tonight i hope you had a good time on the stream i'm sorry things got a little tense tonight at the beginning partially it was because of the conversation partially it was because i was having such a fucking bad time on that kit that i was just my mood was deteriorating, so I do apologize for that and for letting that show. Um, but we will, uh, but we will go and raid. We're gonna find somebody who's doing something out there that we think is rad and give them a little bit of love. Uh, and then, of course, uh, uh, my next stream will be on Saturday. Where I'll be finishing with Greninja and working on Conan. So I hope you come back for that. I'm just trying to see who is doing stuff that I want to go hang out with. Uh, Xander is playing Cross Code. So we're going to go raid Xandra. Xandra made all my emotes and is a lovely woman. She is the best. So we're going to go give her a raid. So feel free to come along on that. Because uh, Xandra rules. And we should go and hang out with her. Uh, so we'll do that in just a second. Um, and of course, thank you all so much for being here uh, again. Uh, and uh, thanks for not... Thanks for being cool about me abandoning a kit I was working on and just working on another one because that thing sucked and uh, this did not. This Greninja has been fun to put together and it's got a lot of stickers, but it looks cute. Um, and uh, we're going to go raid. Thanks so much for being here. I'll see you in the next stream. Bye, everybody. Goodbye, 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 goodbye.